final uh, talk in this morning session. The final uh, talk is given by uh, Professor Toshio Yanagida from Osaka University. The title of talk is Single Molecule Study for Elucidating the Mechanism Involved in Utilizing Fluctuations by Biosystems. Please. Thank you, Mr. Person, for kind introduction. And uh, first of all, I would like to thank the organizer for inviting me to attend such an exciting meeting. And the title of today's talk is like that. And previously, the IBM developed a supercomputer, Blue Gene, to play a chess game with the world champion. Gary Kaspar, and this computer won the this game, but this computer used a huge energy, that is the uh, 50,000 watts. On the other hand, the Kaspar probably used it just only one watt, maybe less than one watt. <laughs> so in general, the biological system used a very small amount of energy for their functions. The biological system is composed of various types of molecular machines. And the input energy level of these molecular machines is not far from thermal noise energy. The molecular machine can thus operate under very uh, can thus operate under very strong influence of thermal agitation with high efficiency of energy conversion. This is in sharp contrast in the uh, man-made machine that operates at energy much higher than the thermal noise energy. So this is a reason why the biological system can operate by using just a small energy. But when the input energy level is not far from the thermal noise energy, molecular machine cannot avoid the effect of thermal fluctuation. Therefore, the apparent performance of function of biological machine is much poorer than that of the non-made machine. For example, the operation time of the transistor is nanosecond. On the other hand, that of the biological molecular machine is just a millisecond, so million times slower. And the accuracy of the biological machine is a terrible, terrible poor than that of the uh, moment machine. And the second example, the rate of the data transfer. As a previously, Professor Shimo, Shimozawa estimated the rate of the data transfer of a neuron by using the sensory neuron of a cricket by using the Shannon, this formula. And they found that the rate of data transfer is just a 400 bits per second. But on the other hand, the optical guide operated by electric device is one gigabyte, one gigabit per second. So also a million times poor. One memory capacity. He is a Kempi. He is a, he's a model of the very famous movie Rayman. Do you know Rayman? So he learned. 7,600 books by a lot. It's amazing. For us, it is difficult to learn only one sentence by a lot. But if he can learn 7,600 books by a lot, probably this is the uh, maximum memory capacity of the human brain. But the, this memory size 
is correspond to 7.6 gigabytes. The memory size of the uh, DVD disk, of which price is just a 200 yen, a two dollar, <laughs> is a 7.4.7 gigabytes. So memory size of our brain correspond to just a two piece of DVD disk, which price is just 400 yen. So, globally, the underlying principle of the bi biological machines should be different from that of non-made machines. So what is the difference between the non-made machine and biological machine? Maybe this answer is that of the what is like. And we have studied this question at the molecular machine level, cellular level, and human brain level. And first, I would like to talk about the study of the molecular machine level. To approach this problem, we have developed several new technologies, the single molecule nanotechnologies for single molecule imaging, single molecule trapping, single molecule imaging, chemical reaction, and single molecule nano manipulation. In the first, I would like to I introduce you these new technologies quite briefly. The first is a single molecule imaging. The biomolecule and even the assembly are nanometers in size. Therefore, it is impossible to directly observe them in an APS solution. To overcome this problem, the biomolecule can be fluorescently labeled in the visual and by fluorescence microscope. This is just like uh, seeing the stars at a great distance in the midnight. So key point to visualize single fluorophore in aqueous solution is how to deject the background noise. So we have used even this field to produce when laser light totally reflected in the interface between glass and wood. As you know, the penetration depth of even this field is just 100, 150 nanometers, so we can greatly reduce the background noise due to the amount of scattering of water molecules, the gas, the luminescence, and so on. And we, of course, have uh, carefully uh, pair the other objects, and then finally, uh, we succeeded in reducing the background noise by more than 2,000 hold, smaller than that of the conventional fluorescence microscope. And then thus, we have succeeded in direct observation of single fluorophore in a solution. Thank you, much of the case. So, uh, this shows the fluorescence image of the single fluorophore. White spot in the image of the single fluorophore. And in uh, 1995, so almost more than 10 years ago, we have succeeded with this experiment. And these people are the main players of this experiment. Anyway, the, before this time, anyone, no one had succeeded in direct observation of single fluorophore in the case solution. And this technique can apply to various types of molecular dynamics. And today I would like to introduce you some applications. The first is the kinesin. The kinesin is a molecular motor that transports organic along the microtubule and the cell. And the size of the kinesin molecule is just 5 or 10 nanometer. But we can see the movement of such a small molecule by using our technique. So you can see a white spot indicates single kind of single molecules. The size of just a five nanometer but we can actually observe the movement of the water proteins. 
and gain a ton at a single molecule level. This is probably the first movie we observed a protein, single protein molecule at work. And the next I will show you the uh, other type of molecular motor myosin, not the muscle myosin. This myosin also transports organic aromatic filament in the nano cell. And the size is also 10 or 20 nanometer. And red line indicates the active filament, and the blue spot indicates the individual or single myosin molecule. So anyway, we can see the movement of single myosin molecule quite easily now. As far as we use the optical microscope, the uh, spatial resolution is limited by the wavelengths of the visual light. So uh, spatial resolution is just uh, at most 200 nanometer. But by using the computer imaging analysis, we can determine the center of the fluorescent spot with nanometer accuracy. The first of all, if we use the quantum dot, which emits a strong, a stronger fluorescence instead of fluorescent dye, we can determine the movement of this quantum dot with nanometer and milliseconds special technical resolution. So, so this is the Myosin 5. Myosin 5 has a two-headed structure as shown here. And then we attach the quantum duct to each, each head of each head. And then we observe the movement of the quantum duct with a nanometer and a millisecond spatial temporal resolution. This one. So this is the movement of the quantum dot attached to the head of the IC5. And this trace indicates that a movement of the quantum dot attached to the one head of the to have the my machine fine. As you see that the movement is not smooth but stepwise. The size of the step is 72 nanometer. A 72 nanometer is the size of the active helicopter pitch. So this result indicates that the my machine five move along active helicopter pitch. Hand over hand. This is not really our original result, but anyway, the original result also clearly show that machine uh, five move along the acting heavy pitch by hand over the hand mechanism. And of course, the, these movements are fueled by the chemical energy moved by ATP hydrolysis. Next, we have applied our technique to directly observe individual ATP turnover events. For this purpose, we have synthesized the fluorescent ATP, ATP, precisely ATP, precisely fluorophore attached to the ribose of the ATP. The myosin molecule interacts with this part of the ATP, so this ATP function as well as normal ATP. This should be set up of the experiment. The size of the ATP, fluorescent ATP, in bulk solution, of course it does not emit fluorescence. When size of the ATP goes into the Ethernet and field, size of the ATP emit fluorescence. But due to very rapid Brownian motion and solution, size of the ATP in solution does not make the fluorescence spot on the detector. 
just the background noise is increased. When the size of the ATP bind to myosin molecule and stop the Brownian motion, it makes a clear fluorescent spot on the detector. So that's the when dissociated from myosin molecule fluorescent spot disappear. So by monitoring the flickering of the fluorescent spot, we can directly follow the individual ATP turnover event for chemical reaction by single mass molecule, a single enzyme in the real time. The upper trace indicates the mass molecule labeled with GFP pixel plus surface. Then we apply the size of the ATP to these mass molecules. Then we observe the ATP tunnel event by monitoring the free character fluorescent spots. So ATP tunnel will take place. Yes. So by any such a simple by using such a simple method, we can directly follow individual chemical events now. And combining the single molecule imaging technique and the for the position determination and the ATP turnover event, we can simultaneously observe the ATP tunnel event and movement. And then the result is like this. ATP bind to the rear head and the rear head dissociate from the acting filament. The rear head undergoes brownian motion and then this head moved toward the forward acting target. And the decimal she had moved along the acting filament. Okay, next, the single molecule nano manipulation. But in our field, that we use the two methods, optical trapping nanometry and the scanning globe. Optical tweeter is a method to capture and manipulate this small but directly part, particle by cotton pressure, as you know. Then by using this technique, we can uh, capture and manipulate a small direct particle. So this shows that's a DNA manipulation. These white spot indicate the, the capture of the direct particle which diameter is 1 micron, 0.2 micron. One end of the DNA attached to this piece, and then the end attached to another piece, and then the DNA can easily manipulate. The combining this method with the single molecule imaging, we can directly follow the process of the uh, transcription of DNA information by RNA polymerase. The DNA molecule here, our components here, and we can follow the movement of the RNA polymerase. This shows that the a movement of RNA, a single RNA polymerase of the DNA. This shows the process of the search of the promoter position of the RNA polymerase. Now also the DNA molecule is the spherical structure to the key question was whether the DNA molecule is rotated during the transcription. And the answer is the DNA molecule is rotated during transcription. This experiment was done by Harada San Pibes Mekbali in 2005. And this shows that manipulation of the active element. And this is the uh, single molecule mechanics. Measurement of the uh, single molecule mechanics by optical trapping nanometer. Uh, this is two atom ductic filament uh, attached to two optical trap piece and the suspended active filament was brought into contact with the single molecule molecule, fixed on the artificial substrate, and then the mechanical individual mechanical event due to optimized interaction and the presence of ATP 
more determined by measuring the displacement of this bit with nanometer accuracy. This is e. So this case is the many mass symbolic interact with acting, so the large displacement are taking place, but anyway, by using this method, we can determine the mechanical events at the same molecule level in your time. And this shows that uh, time loss of the displacement caused by a single mass molecule, you can see the noise that's in the side. So the displacement of 10 or 20 nanometer, the force is one Okay, now I start the explanation of the icing molecule detection techniques. And then I move to the study of how biological molecular machine work. But we have studied the optimizing of the working muscle. And this is because the important functions of the protein, such as enzyme, enzyme reaction, energy transduction, molecular cognition, circle assembly, are integrated in the molecular mode. So, atomization motor is the minimum functional unit of muscle. And as I mentioned, the size of atomization motor is just uh, 10 to 20 nanometers, something like that. And it's such a small molecular machine was deconstructed under an optical microscope and then we observe the mechanical and chemical reaction towards simultaneous measure. And again the two end of that different are attached to two optical drum piece and the suspended acting filament was brought into contact with single machine molecule or single machine head fixed on the glass surface and individual mechanical events was determined by measuring the displacement of this bead with nanometer accuracy. And individual ATP tunnel event was measured by using sensory ATP and the single molecule detection technique. Number trace indicates the time cost of the mechanical displacement. Lower trace indicates ATP tunnel event. And here, the ATP binded to myosin molecule. The so myosin molecule dissociate from acting filament. Then the force are returned to zero level. And then myosin molecule with ADP PI bound, rebind to acting filament and generate the displacement, as you see. And, and this result indicates that each ATP tunnel violence correspond to each displacement. And the next we tried to resolve the process of the displacement. But this displacement takes place very rapidly within one millisecond. So it was impossible to resolve the process of this displacement by using the optical trapping mechanism. So we try to observe the process of the displacement slowed by attaching the head to large scanning probe like this, and the huge probe attached to the small mesh head and then the movement of this machine head was slowed, greatly slowed, and then we observe the process. This shows the setup, and this part indicates the image of the bright field image of the scanning globe, the tip of the scanning globe here. And then we switch for fluorescence observation. In the white spot, you get a single machine molecule. This case, this single machine head was captured by 
the tip of this can go by just the uh, handmade scanners. To capture this single machine, in order to, it takes uh, maybe two or three years training to see and capture that this single machine molecule so anyway. And then the captured machine bed was brought into contact with the active filament. And then the movement of the machine head was determined by measuring the displacement of this can flow with amateur accuracy. And this upper trace indicates the time course of the displacement. And the lower traces indicate the rising phase on an expanded time scale. As you see, the displacement does not take place abruptly, but instead developed in a stepwise fashion. And the size of the step was about 5.5 nanometer, very regular. And the number of the step bar displacement stochastically changed from 1 to 6 or something. And also, the, sometimes the machine had undergo made a mistake, the backward, undergo the backward step. And the important point is that the, each displacement corresponds to one ADPS cycle. So these sub-step, 5.5 nanometer sub-step, are not directly coupled to ATP turnover bands. So this result strongly suggests that machine molecule move by Brownian motion. The 5.5 nanometer coincide with the distance between adjacent active monomers. So this result indicates that the machine can walk on actin monomers by Brownian motion. The new bit afraid that Brownian motion is sufficient to produce the circumtraction that the added by very simple calibration the Brownian motion made a sufficient to produce the movement and force of the machine molecule. But the Brownian motion is random, so that the Brownian motion must be biased in one direction. The next question is how the Brownian motion is biased. In the first we determine the bias potential energy. We measure the sub-step at various low, you see, at the low load, this one, high load, like this, and the step sound, 5.5 nanometer step, is unchanged, independent of the low. And, but at the dwell time, so the dwell time is here. And the number of the backward step here increased at higher loads. The from the number ratio of forward and backward step, we can determine the bias potential energy by using simple this equation. And what red spot indicates the forward backward step number ratio at the various low. Anyway, by using this data, we can determine the bias potential energy. That is the two difference, the 2.5 kT. So potent bias potential energy is 2.5 kg per 5.5 nanometer sub-step. And the several or two or three sub-step take place per displacement. So the potential bias potential energy is about 10 kg per displacement. So AT, what single ATP molecule used to cause that single displacement? And the Free energy of ATP molecule, ATP, the 20 kV. So this value is half of the uh, delta G ATP, so efficiency is 50 percent. Let the this So the this result is that biology head work on active monomers according to potential slope 
along active helix by Brownian motion and the potential slope is like this. The next problem is how is the potential slope generated? So do we have a proposed static effect based on the compatibility between the orientation of the machine head acting band is a very simple one. Acting filament has a helical structure. So for example, this part is favorable for binding of the machine molecule. But this part is difficult, but easy. Here is easy, but difficult for binding. So such a uh, static effect or compatibility should make a potential slope. Here is the potential high and low, made very simple. And recently, uh, our Takano-san, Waseda University, has confirmed this point by using the uh, molecular dynamics, the computer simulation by using computer uh, molecular dynamics. So, probably reasonable. But the, uh, there are large body of evidence for confirmation, evidence for confirmation of the change of neck region of this part of the myosin head. And based on these uh, studies, the Ibarum Silvitin model has been uh, proposed and this model has been widely accepted in the, especially in the Western countries. And in this, according to this model, the, this comp the large conformation of change is directly coupled to the movement of the uh, myosin molecule. So anyway, the, this tilting motion holds the movement. That's all. But the, our, in our model, the neck domain acts as a strength and strain dependent gate for controlling the timing of the start and the stop of the movement coupled to the ATPase reaction and the tilting of the neck domain may contribute to isometric force. So I think that the large part of the movement is caused by bias Brownian motion and this is the final. But the rebound action is important for just the final reaction when the switch is the sensor and so on. Also, the, I have probably no time to uh, give you a detailed explanation of the movement of the machine file, not muscle file. That's transport or an analog. And then, anyway, the result is like this. And show, as I show you, that HP minus the two machine head, machine dissociated from active filament, and the dissociated machine head undergo bias around the motion, and then this head moves towards the forward acting target. So this movement is biased by potential slow by acting element. And also, very consistent. And also the kinesin. Kinesin also has a two head, and the kinesin head move along the micro tube by hand over hand mechanism, like a machine five. And then recently we uh, have demonstrated that the whole the backward step is biased by entropy difference. So anyway, this result also strongly suggests that the kinesin molecule moved by Brownian maturity mechanism. And not only the uh, molecular model, but also the other molecular machine, some ratchet model, may play a very important role. For example, the very famous uh, study of by Toshima Sant on calcium pump. And he have argued that the calcium pump transport the calcium ion by Brownian jet mechanism. The calcium is transported by rectified Brownian motion of large domain, this one, 
the large, uh, this large rotation, large rotational motion, this motion of this domain is responsible for calcium transport, and this large rotational motion is the Brownian motion, and this Brownian motion may be rectified by some such mechanism. The ATP chemical energy is just used to uh, switch the, this uh, rotational motion. So the essential or the base mechanism is the same as that of the electric motors. You may have read that the uh, efficiency of energy conversion by such a molecular machine may be very small, but the, uh, actually the efficiency is very high. So conclusion, with the unique operation of the molecular motor, the molecular motor does not overcome, but use, rather use Brownian motion. The origin of the movement is Brownian motion. The chemical energy from ATP is just used to pass or rectify Brownian motion in one direction. Therefore, the maximum efficiency of energy conversion is more than 50 percent, even at the energy level as small as Brownian noise. So, biological molecule machine use Brownian motion thermal noise. Therefore, the molecular machine can thus operate at energy as low as thermal noise with high efficiency of energy conversion. And this is better. But the operations are stochastic and ambiguous. This nature is a negative factor for man made machine. But probably this nature is also advantageous for adaptivity or flexibility of the biological system. Maybe this is a key point. Maybe this is what is life. So to confirm this point, we have performed the computer simulation of cooperative action between the machine motors and the going stochastic Brownian step based on the natural equation. Very simple equipment. Calculation takes a long time, but anyway, we have done. And then we observe that when The stochastic or the ambiguous molecular motor assembled to form the system. The system, the system showed various dynamics. You see, oscillation and the modulation of the force and the velocity of the movement depend on the external condition. So anyway, it's a very we found that's it. This, this, this system that we assemble of the stochastic or ambiguous element show the very interesting dynamics. So the, this system shows the various dynamics, oscillation, and this system can easily modulate the velocity of the force depending on the condition. So this concept can be used for developing the artificial muscle. So based on this concept, we are trying to develop the artificial muscle, collaborate with a huge big company, and the satisfaction. This is the present robot. That's a, this robot is far from the human being. So this is because the, we have no good actuator that operates like muscle. Most of the present robot is moved by electric motor or piston. So movement is very the variety of the movement of the robot is greatly limited, but if we well be able to develop the new shader that's operating like muscle. We can make a much more wonderful robot. Yeah.
at the present, the, uh, we control the deterministic device like a motor by using a large scale control uh, to produce the various actions or the action. But our concept is that the, uh, by using a very simple control, the, we control the, the artificial muscle or the system, which is which consists of the stochastic and the element and the two products of principal action. So anyway, the, uh, anyway, the company also are very interested in our uh, proposal. So maybe in the near future, we want to develop a new um, artificial muscle and we want to make a huge money. And I have a time. Yes. Maybe I'll just uh, 20 minutes, uh, including discussion. Including uh, two minutes. Two, two, 20 minutes. 20 minutes. Including discussion. Okay. But just I uh, five minutes. Um, the, this is the, the hotel of the Cicero Liston, Limon. And anyone know, anyone, do you know the, how much is the energy required for processing one bit of data by electric computer? Do you know? One bit, just a zero one. To perceive the zero one, two state, how much, how much energy is required? The micro what? Micro to just give or absolute value to one watt. No, no, not one watt. For the KT, how many? Log two KT. What? Log two KT. Log? Log. Log. Okay, I'll show you the, the 20 million KT per bit. So that the computer uses a huge energy for the function. But the, according to the Cicero piston demon model, if the Brownian motion be used, that's saying that it's just a 0 0.7 kT per bit. Of course, the mechanism is essentially different, so we can simply uh, compare these values. But the, this argument suggests that if we use the Brownian motion, the fluctuation, the, we can economize the energy in the computer system. <coughs> and so the, uh, finally, I would like to briefly uh, talk about the uh, picture stadium cell signal. The sound noise is a positive force signal processing in cells. The, not in this case, we applied electric field with galvanic taxes. We apply the electric field and the amoeba, the electric field amoeba, move towards the castle. You see, the gradient is very small, so that the movement of the um, amoeba is not smooth but fractured. But on the average, the amoeba move towards the uh, castle. And then we apply the noise, and then what happened? And then before applying the noise, let's like remember. And then we apply the noise. You can see the difference. Probably you can see the difference. So this shows that the uh, velocity of the towards the castle with uh, the without noise. As you see, in the presence of the noise, the velocity towards the castle is three times larger. So the noise. This is that suggested that the noise is useful for gap-gap taxes. Noise play a positive role in processing of the self-signaling. 
just as suggesting. So of course, the uh, self signaling is processed by the very complicated uh, molecular network in the cell, as <coughs> mentioned by previous uh, speaker. And recently, uh, we can directly observe the molecular network dynamics in the cell and at the same molecular network directly by using <coughs> the technique, same molecular imaging technique. And then we are trying to observe the molecular network dynamics coupled to the Gavin attack, attacks at the single molecule level. Anyway, just I very briefly introduce you our decent result. This shows that the binding of the IPKMP to the receptor. White spot indicates the IPKMP. The next is the GR1. Let's see beta here. It's an IPC kinase. This is the P10. Anyway, I think now we have uh, followed the old, most of the old proteins involved in this molecular circuit, signaling circuit. So then in the near future, we will give you a clear answer how the regular uh, circuits uh, use uh, some of the noise for their processing. It's a solid need. We have not yet seen the clear answer about that. Anyway, the, the, uh, company are also very interested in, in the, our results, and we are trying to develop a processor which does not avoid the effect of the sound of noise, rather it accepts the sound of noise. And then, anyway, at a very preliminary stage, but this processor can simulate the uh, behavior of the amoeba, because in the, in the near future, we will be able to develop the new process, processor, which does not shut down, but accept the sound of noise the economic and the flexible uh, processors. And finally, maybe to get it, uh, the dynamic visual perception. The fluctuation also plays an essential role in the flexible visual perception by human brain. And uh, <coughs> this will be presented by Watson tomorrow. So I will show you it quite briefly. This is the uh, very famous picture by Dali. The name is the image disappears. This is a uh, perception, ambiguous figure. This is the really ambiguous figure. If this is hair, this is the nose, then you see the man. But if this part is head and the shoulder and arm, then you see the baby, right? At least there are two interpretations. This is an ambiguous figures. And then in such a, in, in the perception of such an ambiguous figure, the consciousness is switched to men and lady. And we are studying that process, switching process. And we found that that the consciousness, consciousness switch is caused by the uh, spontaneous fluctuation. And this is the hidden figure perception. Due to the lack of information, uh, you can not perceive this figure immediately. But if you watch for a while, you will notice what is that. I cannot, I do not show the answer, maybe Murata san will show the answer tomorrow. And then he showed that the, this process is very essentially the same as that of enzymatic reaction. Of course, enzymatic reaction is promoted but driven by some fluctuation. So this result suggests that the, the consciousness or perception 
of the brain is also driven by thermal fluctuation or some fluctuation. So fluctuation play an important role in the flexible visual perception by human brain. And you need the what is the difference between the biological man-made machines and such as biological machine utilized fluctuation for economizing energy and the resulting stochastic operation are used for flexible function. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you very much for your interesting talk. Now the session is opened for questions, comments or discussion. I didn't quite well understand what that noise is that you add. How do you add the noise? And what sort of noise is it? It's thermal temperature? To what? You noise. Yes, noise. But so you add, yes, you add and, something. And in case of the mass molecular motor, just the, we measure the movement at a room temperature. Yes. The, just the uh, Brownian motion of the maybe water. Room temperature, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30 degrees something. Yes, and then you add? At next to the amoeba movement, amoeba. The amoeba, yeah. And at that time, we applied, the, that is the Galvano Texas, we applied the noise, electric noise. Electric noise? Yes, in the case of the brain, we cannot <coughs> apply the noise. So that we want to, if you have a good idea, we want to apply the noise <coughs> to the human brain, and uh, if uh, uh, the mass of the noise is <laughs> increased, that's great. <laughs> But that noise that you add to these small amoeba, amoebas yeah, amoeba. is electric. It's some sort of an electrical impulse that is regular or something? Or? But, uh, any noise affects the efficiency of galvanic taps, yes, but the, um, with some special, maybe two kilo health sinusoidal okay. electric fields most efficient. efficient. Okay. So it's a little electrical uh, yeah. something sensor. So that's okay. the, it's the Amiga has a some tuning system. Okay, thank you very much. Okay. Uh, please. So over here, Dave Dealer. You had about two millivolts per ten microns imposed on the amoeba, is that correct? Mm. So that's approximately twenty volts per centimeter that were put across it, just approximately. Then you must have put in a random noise of what, plus or minus 10 millivolts per centimeter. Is that, so that's the perspective that might uh, help explain that question. But it was put in randomly. It wasn't any sort of an oscillating wave. Is that right? Yeah, so that's the membrane potential. It may be 40 millivolts right. in case of the, uh, the amoeba. And then the uh, 2 volts per centimeter correspond to the uh, maybe 40 not exact, but 10 millivolts for something per per membrane. Mm -hmm. So that's the uh, also the yes. Yeah, uh, just a point here, and that is that voltage falls across the insulating barrier of the membrane. Yes. Which is only five milli or nanometers. Right. So it's really quite a large field in terms of electrical field across that. Even a couple of millivolts would be a huge electrical field across the, the insulator. Yes. Electric field is very yes. large, huge. That's right. Yeah. Probably tens of thousands of volts per centimeter. Yeah. Right. Okay, one other question. Calcium is used to activate the active myosin reaction in muscle tissue. Yeah. Uh, are kinesin and uh, dynein also under some regulatory mechanism like calcium, or are they just on all the time? Um, that is a cell, the controversial. So that's the, the probably the hospitalization is related to the regulation of the movement of the kinase molecule. So that the, um, some kinase, the calcium activated the, some kinase, and the kinase, the activated kinase phosphorylated the, the kinase molecule, and the phosphorylated kinase molecule is activated, you know, the phosphorylated. But the, I think that that regulation is not so uh, deterministic or clear. Just like muscle, muscle in case of the muscle is very on up. Yeah. 
In the presence of uh, external noise, uh, biological machine seems to be more effective. Uh, is it possible for a biological machine to distinguish between internal noise and external noise? If it is possible, it can be the first step to be becoming some complex. Yeah, that is the essential point. The, uh, we are you know, as I mentioned that the, in the brain, the brain uses uh, 20 watts. But the, when we think something, the additional energy jump just uh, 0 0.5 watt or something, right? so that the more than 90% the energy is used to just the cause the spontaneous fluctuation. Mm -hmm. How do you measure this um, activity of the muscle? Just noise. And then we think just the additional fluctuate intensity increases the very small. And also, when we observe the uh, movement or the dynamics of the uh, cellular protein in the cell, they undergo very strong fluctuations, even the best state. When we apply something, that movement is not essentially different from that at the best in state. So you, you said, so it's a difficult. So how, why? The, probably the, uh, in the biological system, the spontaneous fluctuation is essential for their function. In case of the muscle, the water molecule causes the fluctuation, the that Brownian motion. But the higher level, the cell level, the brain level, the Brownian motion energy is not sufficient to cause the fluctuation. So that by using the energy, the system make your fluctuation. And I, I feel. So I, yeah. I have another question. Uh, in relation to the previous talk uh, given by Alex, uh, he said that uh, microtube has some dynamic instability. Yeah. Uh, based on chaotic motion. Uh, you mentioned here about Brownian motion of a single molecule. Uh, is there any connection or is there any contradiction between them? No, no, no contradiction. That it also the instability of the thread meaning or elongation of the uh, shrinking of the microtube is caused by probably some fluctuation. So the um, also, the, that's the instability is uh, responsible for the movement of the cell shape, making the cell shape or the um, spin of movement. So that, the, that is, but in our case, I focus on that yeah. movement of the myosin actin. So that, I think that the essential principle of the myosin kind of movement and the microtubule actin instability the same. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Samina, I have a question for, uh, from Southall and the first uh, with uh, the first question of Jose. And, and you said that in, in the experiment of Amber, you uh, added two QL uh, uh, flash uh, nodes. And why did you uh, choose two QL in the experiment? No, no, no just we survey. Uh-huh. The old uh -huh. frequency, uh -huh. and then we can do it. Two kilohertz is not exact. I, I, uh, I do not remember exactly, uh -huh. but the two, maybe two kilohertz. I forgot what I said. Two kilohertz is the uh -huh. most steps. And optimal. Optimal. Okay. So okay. That I don't know why. Uh -huh. yeah. yeah, because uh, uh, the, uh, the statistic nature of uh, the cell is, I think, very important. and. And similar with the question uh, from Southport, and, and uh, uh, you said that the, the, the system uh, of cells uh, uh, sometimes obeys the larger type phenomena, and, and from the experiment of um, uh, microwave into, into, for example, brain or cells, uh, we, we can um, observe the phenomena that some intermittency uh, enhance and the effect. For example, in case of microwave, uh, if you, we have modulation, we can observe a very effective effect, and maybe a uh, couple of nodes well. And uh, so, and also, in case of uh, larger system, uh, we have uh, several time scales, 
uh, characteristic time scale. So uh, we can easily expect that we have um, optimal breaking zero, optimal noise. And with this uh, noise, we can uh, find several internal time scales or physical scales. So, yeah. Mm, but so the, yeah, I, I agree with you that the uh, unfortunately, uh, now we don't know the what's mechanism operate cell signal now. Maybe the two kilohertz is the maximum, maybe <coughs> some system, maybe a characteristic. Yeah. Yes, a uh, characteristic uh, frequency, for example, some larger than the two kilohertz. And the, the, the dependence of the frequency is very, uh, uh, is less not bright or broad or Blood, broad? So not so uh, uh, specific. Not specific. Uh huh. I see. Thank you. Okay. And um, the other question? Yeah, here. Thank you very much for the interesting talks. So you made a comparison between the brain as a stochastic computation and uh, the computer as a uh, deterministic computation. I'd like to know the example, an example of what computation is possible for stochastic uh, system, but is impossible for uh, deterministic computation. So anyway, the calculation, the silicon science is much better. The present computer is much powerful for the calculation and the uh, data treatment, but the, um, it's very poor at the processing the ambiguous information. So that the... Uh, so, so what do you mean by ambiguous information? For example, the... Uh, the uh, ambiguous video, as I showed, the computer cannot show, cannot provide the answer, but we can easily show that it's a man or a baby. We show that the uh, hidden figure we can imagine, and then we can show the, also the language. We be the news of uh, long newspaper. We can make uh, abstract quite uh, easy, but the computer difficult. So that's the that maybe that's the the part of inspiration. Also, the robotics people, um, you know the to make, uh, to control the robots, something like that. And we can easily uh, capture the discipline and manipulate. And we think that this action is very uh, easy action. But for computer scientists, it's very difficult. So that's the, that's the <laughs> probably brain does not work so hard for this action. Just they send a simple pulse. Connection to the, uh, the, the 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 question to me and you answer. Uh, in the uh, our brain system, yes, of course, we have uh, a kind of a potential in which we can distinguish or uh, sense the difference. However, our brain system always always you know experiences many experiences, and beside uh, in addition. Because of the experiences which accumulated in memory system, by memory system, 
we have a potential, all the uh, distinguishing uh, a new, unexpected thing to, to be understood in an ordinary way. Now, of course, in computer system, we should have a, a, a program first. By program, they can distinguish. So this is, of course, clear, clear difference. But in our system, we have a memory experience, based upon experience. This is quite different. Yeah, but the, anyway, <laughs> if we discuss this point, <laughs> it takes a huge time. But anyway, as I mentioned that I believe I specialized in electronics, a computer before. And then I said, the, as I mentioned, the capacity, memory capacity of the brain is very poor. And probably the, uh, shall I say, the, the performance of the brain is not, not wonderful. But it's very poor compared with the computer. The mysterious thing is that still our brain can make computer. So that is the mystery. So that I want to make that point. Uh, sorry for making up my question. Well, uh, my question is quite a generic one. From a conservative physical point of view, you know, uh, existence of demon was denied uh, during the contraction of um, the status quo mechanic. So, uh, well, uh, the demons uh, cannot behave as a machine, uh, consuming such a small amount of energy compared with an KT. So uh, the, it is said that the demons also fall into fluctuations, some fluctuations with such a small energy. So what is your opinion about um, such a uh, conservative okay. physical <laughs> point of view? But not, not KD, we apply the a little bit larger energy than the KD. Mm, but you have mentioned that 1.7 KD is enough for uh, closing the shadow or so in last line. So that point that... Mm, also, as I mentioned, that the, in case of the muscle, myosin, the 2.5 kg is sufficient uh, to uh, produce the muscle contraction. Uh, so that the, uh, the, anyway, the energy level, input energy level of our system is not far from common voice energy. Okay, now thank you very much again.